All right, it's top of the hour. Shall we begin? I think so. Uh, we won't get into some meaty, exciting stuff for a few minutes, give people a chance to log in and get their computer and sound working, because we know how that goes on the technical <laughs> side on the other end. Yes, so, exactly. Let's yeah. begin, Vic. Let's begin. All right, well, uh, first of all, I want to welcome everybody to the webinar. Uh, thank you for joining. My name is Vic Hennigan. I'm the Director of Sales for Patient Prism. Um, and I, I'd like to welcome our, our guest. Uh, he's the founder of 1-800-DENTIST. He's written several books, uh, Becoming Remarkable, and of course, the industry standard, Everything is Marketing. My friend and mentor, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Fred Joyle. Hey, Fred. Well, hi, Vic. Uh, I'm excited to talk about this because as we both know, this is the number one challenge in the industry is really what happens uh, at the front desk, on the phone, particularly with new patient callers. Uh, yes. And of course, uh, uh, my background really is that I started 1-800-DENTIST back in 1986 with a friend of mine and uh, ran it for 30 years and uh, dealt with the over 8 million incoming callers of people looking for a dentist. And the number one challenge for that business from day one until you know, five minutes ago is what happens when that potential patient gets handed over to the front desk. And so that's what we're going to get into today because the, the waste that happens, the loss, the confusion that occurs uh, is, is something that can be addressed better than ever. Uh, we were, you know, we would have loved a solution like this uh, many years ago. So, uh, that's that's why you're having me. I think as a guest, it's because we work together. <laughs> exactly. To work together. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. and and uh, you know you you are working for a company that solves the problem. So exactly, exactly. Challenges, you know, because you know there are certain things that dentists, every dentist wants to know, and things that every dentist should know. You know, and like you're saying, as far as converting how to get your front office to actually say the things that they need to say to get the new patients to schedule and come in. Um, and how do you know if they're saying that? Or how do you know what they're doing? And this seems to be a problem that goes across the spectrum. Um, as you and I talk, we've, you know, we've seen from solo practitioners to um, large dental groups all seem to have this sort of same collective challenge. Yeah, and, and step one is every dentist wants to know, how do I get more new patients? And of course, the, the number one way is convert more of the people that are actually calling the office who may want to come there. Right. Uh, and then you have, to, you have to know how the patients are finding you. Uh, you know, what, what medium are they using? Are they, is it word of mouth? Is it, is it uh, direct mail? And, you know, we're going to go into some of that stuff, but... But this is what dentists want to know or should know. Uh, even they want to know what's working and then maybe what people are asking for. What, you know, are they calling about Invisalign? Are they calling just to get a cleaning? Are they calling to get a tooth pull? What, what, are they, what is it that this advertising or this word of mouth is bringing me as a patient? And then uh, the big challenge is, you know, obviously did they appoint, but what a lot of people don't know is if they didn't book, why not? Why not? Uh, you, you know, that's the big mystery uh, because when somebody calls and doesn't appoint up to now, there's been no record of that. So, right. Uh, right. right. And being able to identify that missed opportunity um, is, is something important because now this opens up a whole another book of how to train for that opportunity the next time it comes around or even being able to regain that same opportunity that you've already spent the marketing dollars on to get in the first place. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, we're going to be talking about patient prism, which uses technology that gets these results that gets and that solves this problem by actually tracking. First of all, just being able to say, I know what happened on that phone call. And then, 
more exciting than that is what do we do about it? And, and there are things you can do that have to recapture those patients. So in essence, that's what we're talking about where we're today. And yeah. you know, we're going to, at the end of this, you're going to know what to do, how to solve this problem. Yes. Yeah. So Fred, some things to do to drive, first of all, to drive the calls into the practice. Yeah. I mean, first of all, you know, and some of these things are, are absolutely essential. You have to have a digital presence. You have to good, have a good responsive website. Uh, I even recommend that at this point you have a chat bot on it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then find out what a chat bot is because <laughs> it's, it's the way people want it. It's that thing that pops up all the time uh, and asks you if you have any questions uh, right. that people are used to that. Uh, but you should be, you know, you should have a good Google profile that shows up. It'll show up in the map listing. You can, for free, you can fill your Google site with tons of information. You have to have an online strategy uh, for reviews, a systematic way of generating reviews on a consistent basis, particularly on Google and on Yelp. And now, of course, you can generate patients through Google pay-per-click, Google AdWords. Uh, mm -hmm. You can do it through Facebook. Referral services like 1-800-DENTIST. Direct mail still works in some areas. It's an expensive medium, but you know sometimes it attracts the best patients too. If you're attracting new movers and things like that, right? Of course, still got print. You still got some newspapers, newsletters that you're doing, whether they're electronic or uh, paper that you're you're sending out. Some dentists. I just saw a dentist billboard the other day in Beverly Hills. Giant billboard for an orthodontist, uh, and you know so. It's for some people that's working for some people, radio and TV. If your town is small enough, uh, uh, I know a doctor that's, that's doing TV mm -hmm. because it, it, the radius that the TV spills in, uh, is not so big. Like if, you know, if somebody tries to do it where, where I live, Vic in Los Angeles, you run TV, you're at 40 miles from reaching 40 miles beyond where anybody's going to come to you in your practice. But, your town is small, it's going to work. And then it's, it's how are you involved in the community? How are you uh, generating referrals uh, by being engaged at, at social events, sponsoring little league teams or, or charity events and things like that? So there's, there's all of these ways that you can get the phone to ring. Right. But then what? Yeah, but then what? And so you kind of said, like, know your demographic, know your area, and things like that, you know, as far as the, the marketing media that you're trying to, to, to get to. Right. And of course, all this stuff, you should be measuring that somebody, you need to know where every single patient comes from. And, and until you do, uh, you, you won't know what works. The worst uh, tracking method there is, is asking that front desk person what they think works. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a reflection of their mood of the moment or the last patient that they talked to. Exactly. Uh, it's yeah. not an accurate measurement. I mean, one of my... Uh, yeah. Plus, they generally forget half the time anyway. Right. Well, they're not aggregating data. That's not their job. That's what software is for. Right, so, right. Uh, right, so, right. but they should be aggregating the source. That's, that's part of the, a key part of the job is how did you find us? Uh, was it another patient? Cause you certainly want to thank that patient. And was it, was it 800 dentist? Was it, was it something else that, that, uh, uh was it the direct mail that you did? Was it a Facebook ad? And it won't be a hundred percent accurate, but at least you'll be able to say what's productive and what isn't. Right, right, right. So using tracking numbers um, is one of the most effective and accurate ways to actually track and see what's going on because with the tracking number, now you know precisely where the call came from, whether it came from AdWord or your billboard or um, your radio ad. Yeah, so, uh, so tracking number, it, it, for those who are still trying to wrap their heads around what that might be, because you may just have you, the, the practice phone number. There are a number of services now that allow you to assign specific phone numbers to your different ad campaigns. And that, that helps you to get like a, a major count 
of what's come in, and that's what you can see. You can see what's at, at the at the, at the on the left hand side of the screen here. If they have a unique phone number, you can you're not just on a direct mail piece. You could say, all right, all these these we got 50 calls from the direct mail piece. Uh, about 10 of them came in. So now all of a sudden, you know, 50 calls came in, and then then uh, only so many of them converted into somebody coming and convert. You know, but this is your basic your high level conversion rate, which is really important because it means. Okay, we had like this, this is an example. You look at 244 website dynamic calls coming in at 17 book. That's a lot of conversation <laughs> for, right. for 17 appointments. Right. What the heck happened? You know, what's, what's, what, what trend, what was it generating? What did they think they were getting when they called? <laughs> that, 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 you know, like 5% of them decided to book. Uh, right. this is, this is, you know, so, uh, these unique phone numbers, it's not that hard to do anymore. And you even know how to do it for specific web pages. So if they suddenly go into the, the Invisalign page of your website, like they go in deep, you can have a different phone number in there than on your front page. Cause right. you say, Oh, they like this is Invisalign is what they call that. Right. So, right. right. Um, that's this is the you know using technology. I mean, so much of what we're going to talk about is there are technological solutions that can really solve this problem in a in a really effective way. It give right. you give you really good information, and, and and so you're not wasting energy and money. Right, right, and like like you know our program, Patient Prism, for instance, has those mechanisms that will just kind of help you see how many calls did you get you know, with Google Maps, how many calls did you get with Google AdWords? So you can use the data, you know, and, and this is gonna help you decide where are you gonna make your investment? So, okay, we're getting a lot of calls and a lot of response from one particular campaign, but we're not getting it from another campaign. So this is gonna help you make a fast decision on maybe letting go that other campaign or doing something different with that other campaign to, to put the money towards something that is working. Well, and also because Patient Prism is recording the call, you can right. say, okay, we ran an ad on Facebook and it got a, a goofy response. Uh, so now you can not only you say, okay, we got 100 calls and you appointed 15 of them. That's not, that, that doesn't make sense. Right. Then you, then you listen to the call and they go, oh, they looked at the ad and they thought that this was a free clinic somehow. <laughs> Right? It's like, no, no, that's not what the message was in the ad, but somehow they misinterpreted it. So sometimes you, you just have to fix the ad, not right. abandon the media. Right. But, but, but you can't do that just with the numbers. You got to do it with the what happened. What did people say? What did people hear? I mean, right. that would happen with 800 dentists too. We would run an ad and all of a sudden we'd get a surgeon crazy call. And then we right. listen to the calls and they go, oh. I have to take that spot off the air. They're totally misunderstanding that. Um, and so this is what, you know, you go from high level into what people really understood and what excited them. Because, you know, on conversely, you get, if you got a high conversion on, on Google Maps or Google AdWords, you listen and you go, oh, this is what excited them. This is why they called. Let's let's keep that message out there. Let's spread that message out onto other media and see how it does. But you know where to hit the gas pedal. That's that's right. the, with your media dollars. That's what helps. Right, right, right. So the next step is converting those calls, finding yes. out the metrics about that. You have now you have your in place. You have the calls coming in. You know where they're coming from. Now you have to convert more callers into new patients. Right. This is, as they say, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is, uh, this is, this is the biggest log jam in, in any practice. And, right. and it's because so many things can happen. It's a multitasking position. It's an undertrained position very often. It's, it's, uh, they're, they're, somebody hasn't told them what's the priority. Uh, just just uh, you know, we're going to talk about this chart, but you know, we, you and I know of uh, 
of a basic statistic that consultants will tell you that one out of every four calls that goes into a dental practice when it's open goes to voicemail on average, 25%, one out of four. Well, right. we, we, we know a, a, a large group practice that was, you know, individual practices were answering the phone. They found 39% were going to voicemail. Uh, that's what can happen. That's, that's like a mind boggling amount of waste. And of course, they also knew 60% of those callers never called back because they looked at the number one time call. Of course, you're not going to call back. Nobody answered. <laughs> so, right. uh, Answer the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's really complicated advice I'm giving. Answer the phone. Uh, but but it's you know it's so basic because human beings now I mean we hang up after three rings. Right. Uh, you know it's like we become insanely impatient. I think it's ATM machines that taught us to be so impatient. It's like we get our money in you know 17 right. seconds and we're right. sitting there going. Come on, come on. Get yeah. <laughs> What's taking so long? We used to wait in line for 45 minutes with our paychecks at the bank on Friday. And now we get it instantly and it's not fast enough. Um, right. But I mean, that's, this is, and, but talk about this chart. Talk about what this boils down to for people. Yes. You know, I mean, you, you want to be able to see a metric that actually shows you what's going on. Um, with, you know, because most offices, they have no idea how the front office is doing when they're answering calls. So you get something, you know, like patient, uh, like patient prism, where you can actually get mes metrics on like hangups and phone trees. You know, a lot of offices have a phone tree. Yes. How is the phone tree doing? I mean, is the phone tree too long? Are we getting it to a person? Is it getting it to a live person fast enough? And when you have something that shows you the metrics, you usually are surprised. You can see it and go, oh, we're missing a lot of calls right in that area there. Helps you make a decision on things you can do to modify it. Yeah, what, what and you know, like example, if they hang up in the phone tree, one out of four, like 24% here hanging up in the phone tree, it means for some reason that message is either too long mm -hmm. or turns them off in some other way and they're gone. They're, they're not even ready to talk to somebody. Uh, right. So you're going to shorten it, or maybe you're going to get rid of it. Uh, you know, I mean, if, when I call my doctor's office, it's I go through several things. My cardiologist, I just did this the other day. <laughs> I got to go through several stages. Of course, I have to tell you, first of all, call 911. Don't call us, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it starts there. Uh, if you're really in trouble, we're not your doctor. Call, 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 call that it. makes you feel good to start off with, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I don't feel that good. I Maybe I will call an ambulance. But uh, that, then it was like, okay, if you finally want this, then press this. And, of right. course, then you get the doctor's secretary who has never picked up as long as I've called them. Right. Because the voicemail. Yeah. So, uh and, and, you know, she's going to clear it, but she's also never called me back that day. Right. So it's a day or two later. Right. I'm, I'm not sure how that's possible. But, and, and they can get away with it because he's a cardiologist, right? He's, he's all right. insurance driven, right? He's, that's how he's making his money, keeping you from, from lying, dying on the, on the, on the table. But yeah. that, this, that doesn't fly in a dental practice when there's too many other options for them. Right, right. My, my favorite is, is uh, the bank. Um, whenever I call my bank, when I have to do that, how it goes through from one phone tree to the next to the next, because they, they don't care. You know, they're like, look, we have your business. And so it's, it's not quite the same. And yeah. uh, I mean, and then of course, the metric, the voicemail, no message business hours. You want to look at something like that, because you need to take a look at how, you know, if, if you're missing calls during business hours, going straight to voicemail, that's pretty much your marketing dollars going, you know, flying away. Yeah, that's so, that, you know, is massive waste. But you also want to know if, if you're missing a lot of stuff at night, maybe you need a service that actually picks up, not, right. not just that takes up that, not just voicemail. Right, right, right. And of course, we have reasons why people don't don't appoint. 
Yeah, I mean, there's, there's tons of data on this, and, and patient prism has it, and, and we certainly we we know a lot about it. I, you know, I from talking and consulting with a bunch of doctors over the years, you know, hundreds of practices, uh, we have a sense of of what is is making people not a point. And you know, number one is, you know, they they can't get in when they want to get in. Right. Uh, and we're gonna dive into that a little more, aren't we? We gotta. Uh, yeah. The, the scheduling issue, but that that's that's either number one or number two because the other one is cost. Uh, what's what's what is it going to cost me to get this problem to go away or to right. take care of my family or whatever? And right. you take my insurance, and of course, when they figure out uh, you know a location is always an issue, and they they decide wow if, if it's a combination schedule and location it's wow, I, I can't get in there or I can't get in there at that time. That's inconvenient for me because it's so far. But if you had Saturday hours, it wouldn't be a, a problem. Kind of thing. Right. Um, and then, of course, you, the, the, a lot of the other stuff is stuff you're, you're picking up with patient prism. Uh, yeah. Like, right. Like receptionist attitude. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or they never offered an appointment. <laughs> right. Problem. Right. 15 right. minute phone conversation. Right, right. So, you know, so having something that will kind of show you that metric, like, you know, how, you know, how your, your person is answering the phone, where, you know, being able to show you things that says, this is what they're doing really well, and this is where they need improvements. Uh, right, of course, yeah, because, so this is, this is what you would, the analysis that you would do uh, uh, on a phone call. Right. Um, that's been recorded specifically for somebody that didn't come into the practice. Uh, mm -hmm. go, go back to that, because there's some juicy stuff in there. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, I don't want to gloss over it because there's, there's so, much, so much there that, and, and, and this is about training the front desk to do what's essential to convert those people by going back and looking at what could be called failed conversations. Uh, right. and, and so, uh, it lists all the things that the, the person did right that should be done. And then it talks about what it analyzes through AI, what wasn't said to the person. What did they ask about or where, where were they going that they weren't led in the right direction or they didn't get a response at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, things like, uh, did you offer a free consultation? Did you mention financing? Uh, did you, uh, you know, do, do you sound like you're, you're compassionate on the phone, like you right. care, like, like no matter what happens, this is a great place to come in. Right, that right. Kind of stuff, uh, has, to, has to happen. And, and we want, these are basics. That's, that's the big word. These are, these are basics. Basic. These are not like, you know, strange, arcane things that we're suggesting. This is the baseline. Right, right. And then... So, yeah, and this is, this is what a call actually looks like, like the, like the analysis of a call from patient prism, right? Yes, yeah. So it kind of maps it out for you so that you can see what happened during that phone call. You can see keywords that are tagged um, so that you know what, what the patient was calling about to begin with, you know, implants, crowns, and they don't have insurance. And, and one of the great things, you know, about this is being able to see it without having to listen to the entire phone call. And then to see, you know, the shaded areas are coaching moments where the person on, on, on your end of the line did either something really well, which is shaded in green, because you want to give accolades when they do something well, or shaded red, where they could have improvements or could have said something different. And this is, this is really where you help your people, you know, in, in working on the phones, when they're answering the phones, so that they start to understand how they could have done something better. So this actually goes, this, this is a report that's created by Patient Prism. This, yes. These little big and small lines, this is the sound wave, basically. Yeah. You know, you've done a lot of music and stuff like that. So <laughs> don't, don't recognize yeah. that this is, this is voice recording. This is, this is a voice this recording. Is the, the timeline of the conversation uh, that's, that's been listened to. And, and so Patient Prism, it analyzes it with AI, 
But then there's also human beings going in afterwards and looking at those key moments and annotating it, correct? Right, right, right. And then, so, and then what happens? It goes, it, who does it go to? Who, where's, what happens? Then? Well, it, it gets, it's an email, uh, and a, a text or email that'll actually go to the office. Um, whoever is assigned to get this, you know, the office manager, um, if you have a, um, a CMO, they might receive it but they get this, but this gives them an opportunity to see what happened during this call. Um, the important thing about this is twofold. First of all, it helps them see what happened with the call so that they can help the person get better on the phone, the person who answered the call. They can see what happened. But secondly, gives you an opportunity to get back in touch with that person who made the initial phone call. Because I mean, with Patient Prism, we send it out an hour after the call so that you get this because it's fast, actionable data. You want to get data as fast as you can so that you can do something with it. By getting it this fast, you can actually call back that person based on the information that was given here and get, get a second chance at a first impression, get that person to schedule. Well, yeah, and uh, that's, that's what's so exciting to me is that person's gone, okay? Yes. At, the, at that point, and, and up to now, the dentist never knows that they disappeared. It has exactly. nothing that tells him or her that this, this person called, didn't get what they wanted, and is gone. And he may have paid $100, $200 to get that response uh, right. on the medium. Uh, and, and this is what that, you know, blows my mind is the percentage of recovery that you actually create. Because basically, if, if you're recovering one or two a month, that would be amazing because that is, yeah. they're yeah. gone. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, but you're, I mean, you're, what percentage are you, uh, are you well, seeing? Well, I was just getting ready to say, I was getting ready to say 20%. Wow. So can you imagine every month getting 20% of those people that you missed back to your office? Yeah, so if, if they had uh, 25 people not call, not make an appointment for whatever right. reason, they that they turn they get five they would be getting five of them five back, of back on forever. Yes, they, they've resurrected them. Uh, yes, for uh, five people, five new yes. patients. That's that's an enormous value. It is the marketing dollars you've already spent just reworking it for you. Yeah, you've remined it and and yielded a twenty percent yield. I, you know, I'd be happy with ten. I'd be ecstatic. <laughs> with 10, you know? so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, um, Fred, I mean, you know, you know, the business, you know, what people are saying and what they're not saying and, and how they're like talking to the patients. Um, you know, things like, do you take my insurance and, and how that can be answered or not answered the right way or the wrong way? You yeah, know? because, uh, you know, people don't want to go on a network. Uh, they're, they're, they're reluctant to, they want somebody else to pay for it, and they don't understand what the heck their insurance covers. They don't understand it's a discount plan. They think it's health insurance half the time. So right. step two would be explain the difference when you finally get them in the office. But you don't want to say, no, we don't take your insurance. That's, that's the way to, to <laughs> end it right there. Because you, and you don't have to say that. You, you don't want to, people are going to go, well, we don't take their insurance. Uh, but there's some really simple answers. And there are some, there are some great teachers, we're going to mention one of them, who, who really helps explain just using different verbiage. Just when you say something different, you don't let that person get away. Um, and so basically you say, look, we're not in that network, but we have a lot of patients who are in that network and we file a claim for you and get as much money as we possibly can for you. Uh, or let me, you know, we're happy to call your insurance company and find out just, you know, because your plan, you, you may have Delta, but for your employer, it may have a whole different range of coverage than, than somebody who works at, at Rockwell or something like that. So we'll find out for you. So you're being helpful. You're coming in and saying, this, this is, you know, how we can help you navigate this insurance pathway. Um, and we want you to understand ahead of time what your insurance covers and what it doesn't. And also understand that mostly 
it's a reduced payment on and some basic care. Uh, the more catastrophic your need in dentistry, the less coverage you have. <laughs> and, and there's a limit. There's a cap on it per year. And right. those, those, those caps aren't that big anymore. And they haven't changed since the 60s. <laughs> you know, so wow. uh, what's important is we get you in because the doctor would be very concerned. We're not going to charge you to examine you, at least have a second opinion if you go somewhere else. You already understand what to do. Uh, and hey, you may not like a practice that takes that ends up taking your insurance, and you may right. love the practice that's gonna help you process it and really take good care of it. So you end up going back. So that's who you wanna be. You wanna be that remarkable practice that even if they can't, they don't wanna go to you because their insurance isn't accepted by you or you're out of network, once they're in net, at a place in network, they go, I want to go to the remarkable place. You know, I don't want to be in, in the, the clinic anymore. I want to, it's not worth it. <laughs> Especially when they get the bill, it's like, oh yeah, yeah. sure it didn't cover $1,700. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, that sounds like no insurance. <laughs> uh, and so get them in. Number right. one thing about the job is get them in. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course we want to thank Teresa Duncan, um, for, you know, moving your patients to yes, overcoming insurance hurdles. Um, those, a lot of those last responses were, you know, based out of her, her consulting. Yeah. I mean, this is all brilliant stuff. So, yeah, uh, yeah. um, we're going to make it easy for them to get that, get their hands on that book right at the end. Right. Yes. Uh, but, yeah. uh, but yeah, that's, I'm just, Talking what Teresa goes into detail and how you navigate those waters very right. comfortably, not just effectively, but you don't feel like you're lead, you're deceiving them. You're, right. you're helping them because it's it's a confusing thing. And that and if, and if they have misconceptions about it and they're gonna make the wrong decision based on the misconceptions, let's help right. them make the right one, which is the right decision. healthy to invest in their mouth. Yeah. So, yeah. And here's that big question. How yes. Much does it cost? Oh my God. Uh, you know, and, and you don't want to just go, well, we can't tell you, uh, you know, we, we, we have to look in your mouth. Uh, I know this is what everybody wants to say is like, don't quote prices over the phone, but you gotta say something. Right. Um, so you have to, so what do you say? Um, basically, you, 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 again, it's, it's the right words make all the difference at the front desk. That's why we it's emphasize that, right. that, that, that when they, when they, it, this is the other thing that happens with patient prison. When that, when that, that front desk person hears the recording and mm -hmm. they use the right words, they go, they hear how it worked. Like that, they're, they're, they're back watching the right. interaction now instead of being in the thick of it. They're right. watching it and they're going, Oh, yeah. When I said, you know, that's a common question. We understand uh, that, that cost is a factor. We, we're, right. we try to be the most affordable care, but we try to give very high quality care at the best prices. Right. Uh, and we have financing options that can help you with it. But let's find out what's going on in your mouth first. Right. Uh, and and the thing would be very concerned about when you, what you told me, the doctor would be very concerned about that. And she's going to want to at least give you an exam and, and tell you what, what absolutely needs to get taken care of. But nobody's going to charge you anything without you understanding it. Ahead of time. Right. Certainly, it's a little different conversation. Yeah. And when they hear that working, they listen to a patient prison recording and they go like, oh. And then they said, Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll come in. Okay, yeah. Can you come in at two tomorrow uh, or five today? And they're in. And they're in. So that's yeah. the whole thing. They they see that the right words are can be magical instead of right. just like uh, you know we can't we can't tell you that. <laughs> There's no way to know. There's no when they say you have no idea what a crown costs in your office. It's like. Well, uh, you know, we're in a reasonable range. And at a certain point, you may have to give them a range of, of what it costs. But you yeah. say, you may have insurance coverage. We're going to do our best to get every penny from them. Um, and we also have financing options. But, and, and you have options on, on how you take, how you solve the problem. Find right. out how bad the problem is first. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, quoting, yeah. 
yeah, quoting fees is, is definitely a thorn in I think every dental practice side. And, you know, a program like Patient Prism, you know, when the coaching, you know, going back to, you know, the slide we had earlier where you had the coaching moments in there, you know, helps a person understand how to start saying to cut the right verbiage to, to be able to overcome that, you know, when they, when they run into those situations. Yeah. And, and, and it's, and there's a, there's an art to it and, it, but it's, it actually gets to be fun because you convert more patients. Hang right. on a second. I got something beeping over there. I don't know what it is. Like it's, it's my, it's my uh, little thing from my bike. And it's, it's, uh. <laughs> it's happy now that it's fully charged and it wants me to unplug it. It wants you to know that it's charged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got it. You have to love modern technology. Um, it, it really helps us through life. I mean, this is, these are the things when you have something like, if you're letting you yeah, know, hey, hear, job, it was me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> pay attention to me. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, and of no. course, scheduling. It's scheduling because because this is this is this is where a lot of practices fall down. Is uh, right. oh, we're booked out two weeks. Uh, right. You know, That's or bad. or <laughs> sixty days for a profi. Um, and they're not, you know, if we learn, you and I learn anything in 800 Dennis, you, yes. you go a couple of weeks out, they're not coming. They're not, they're not coming. They're long gone. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and if, so figure out what they want, it, it, you know, and it, my basic belief, and I always put this out there, and you know it's in probably both my books. Yes. Is that I believe any dentist can get any patient into their office tomorrow. Because you don't have to, give them a full treatment, get them in, find some time. How much chair side do you actually need? Have, give them a tour of the office, sit them down, maybe talk with the assistant, maybe take some, some x-rays or just do a quick exam, just a quick conversation. If it's something that really needs to be done, hey, you need to work it in. You're, right. a, you're a surgeon. Uh, you need to treat some emergencies. So work through lunch, you know, have, schedule them right before lunch in case it is something you have to do. Um, right. And, you know, it, it, I, I, Howard Fran always talks about the cheapest thing in dentistry is to have an extra operatory so that you can go in and do emergencies. They pay for themselves on a daily basis practically. Right, right. Um, so um, get them in. Get them in as soon as you can, and don't and catch yourself. If, and and again, it's listening to the calls, and you hear, oh, as soon as I said two weeks, there was like this. Dead uh, uh, <laughs> well, well, yeah. And you go, yep, that's when I lost them. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Being able to listen to the call and hear that back, you learn. You yeah. know. Yeah, and at least be able to say like if they if they, if they need a bunch of time, say look, I can schedule you for, uh, you know, next Monday. I know it's Tuesday and you know you'd like to get in sooner, but I'm going to put you at the top of my list, my ASAP list. If there's any openings at all, I'm going to call you immediately and see and see if you can come in right then because I know you want to get in early. That's a that's the last ditch. But what are you doing? You're saying, I'm trying to accommodate you. Not right. your job is to fit my schedule the way we want to work. Or right. Too bad. Right. Okay. They already know that happens in healthcare. <laughs> they don't need that from you. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And speaking of accommodating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better do it. Like, like my, my, uh, that this is, you know, they letting them go. It's 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 like if you're selling cars and you let them leave the dealership, they're going to another. You're, you're not coming back. Who's yeah. not going to let them go? <laughs> so uh, remember, it's, there's a little bit of sales involved in all of this, and sales philosophy, which is right. You know, understanding there's a there's a, a an urge that they have to take care of this problem, and if you're not solving it. I'll call you back later means something else. It means right. you're not solving my problem now. Right, so right. Solve it somewhere else. Don't misinterpret it as, oh, I'm too busy to keep talking. They're the one that called you. Right. So, um, 
And so it's, it's this same verbiage. Glad you called us today to let us know how the problem, about the problem you're having. Right, right. And, right. you know, let's, you know, are you sure you don't want to come in right now? Uh, or can I call you back? Uh, uh, and may, I'm sorry, maybe I didn't answer. Is there a question I didn't answer before you go? Because I want to make sure I did everything on my end so that you're fully informed, or maybe uh, I, I left something out, or maybe you 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 maybe you just want to come in, but you don't know you don't understand how that's going to happen. So I'm happy to talk about that. But I, you know, I'd love to get you in here, see the office. I think you're really going to love this practice. My whole family comes in here. You start throwing all that stuff out there because they're gone. They're okay? gone. So so it's time to start. Tossing the Hail Mary passes and seeing <laughs> if anybody catches them because <laughs> you have nothing to lose. And once again, when you hear it work in the recording, you hear somebody say, well, you know, I, I don't know what I want to do. Let me call you back. And you just, you probe a little bit and say, are you sure you wouldn't like to come in tomorrow? Because the doctor would be very concerned. Uh, and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to shift some stuff around. If you need to get in tomorrow, let me move. I'll actually... I have a person I know that, that I could move her for an hour later. Uh, would you like that appointment? Just mm. try some stuff. Right, um, right, right. But don't let them go. Don't let them go. Yeah. And, you know, coaching and training um, is, is super important, as, as you mentioned, Fred, as we were talking about. And, you know, like with uh, Patient Prism, you know, you get, not only do you get the alerts about the missed opportunities and the shaded areas that kind of show where things could have been better, but you get the training videos. And I know you've helped us make some training videos. We've had other industry leaders come in, help us make these training videos. Um, it's, it's super important because when they get, when the front office gets this kind of training, they see, you know, like some of the questions we went through and how to get the verbiage and how to be able to, 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 to talk to the patients about these things. Yeah, and as I said, it's the most undertrained position. Uh, and it's also the position with a lot of turnover. Right. Uh, so a lot of times you get somebody fully trained that they're knocking it out of the park day after day after day, and then right. they quit. <laughs> um, whatever. They, or their husband gets a job in Duluth and they move, you know, uh, and you go, I lost my really happy front <laughs> getting everybody in. Right. You want to be able to retrain somebody quickly. And these are all, these are industry leaders doing this, these videos, and they're short, you know, they're, they're yes. good bite sized lessons, which I right. think right. is Quick the learning. easiest way to train somebody. Yeah, yeah, each video is about 60 seconds long. It's quick learning. Um, and, you know, it gives great consulting tips and verbiage um, that, that they can use. Now, these are actually, do you, I, I, I believe this is what you do is sometimes yes. in the, in the uh, when you give the feedback on a specific call, you yes. can actually include this video. You this actually is, include, yeah, yeah, so what happens is, yeah, when, when the alerts go out, you know, not only do you see the call and the, the keywords tag and, and the coaching, but you'll also get two to three training videos that actually pertain to the conversation that was had. So you can see, you know, if, if it was quoting fees, you know, we'll attach a video to it about quoting fees and verbiage and understanding how to handle that, things like that. And, and, and like we said, the, the, the videos are about 60 seconds long a piece. So it's quick learning, if, you know, they don't, because if they have to sit there and, and watch, you know, an hour long video, they're you know, not gonna do it. And it's not to the point. This is, this is targeted information when you need it most, which is also when people learn the fastest, you know? Right, exactly, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah so when it's, when you need to know, and there's in one minute you can go, oh yeah, I'm calling them back. Uh, right, great. right, right. So some quick things, you know, patient prism results and, and, you know, what we do. I mean, knowing what to say makes a huge difference in call conversion. As, you know, we talked about that, being able to train and have the people have the right verbiage at that moment, you know, that's going to make a difference with whether somebody schedules or not, you know. Yeah. 
um, as we mentioned, you know, increased appointments by 22% when we were talking about getting those missed opportunities, getting back in touch with them. Um, you've already spent the marketing dollars. You want to make sure you get the most out of it. And as, as we mentioned, you know, you can get, you know, 20% of the people back with, you know, like the re-engaged loss opportunity part of the program. Yeah, uh, imagine, imagine if you lost a word of mouth patient because of that. Uh, yeah. Those are the strongest patients. They have a relationship with somebody who has a relationship with you. It's a much closer connection than somebody that comes through advertising. Right. And somehow you manage, you know, they're still, they're not, they're still a shopper. Everybody needs to remember they're a shopper until they accept treatment. So mm -hmm. don't yeah. give them reasons to leave, you know, to empty the shopping cart. <laughs> right. I, you know, Fred, in one of your books, uh, Everything is Marketing, you mentioned that dentistry is a retail market. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> because they have options. They, they have they, options, they have yeah. options on treatment, and they have plenty of options on patients yeah. to go. Yeah, and, and I, I know when I read that, it, it, it changed my thought of dentistry. I was like, wow, yes. That's, <laughs> that was a big aha moment for me. Yeah, it's, um, it, it's on-demand healthcare. There's, there's, right. you, know, you can always pull the tooth, right? And, right. And, right. and that's, sometimes that's what call we would get. It's like, I, I needed my tooth pulled. It's like, are you sure? Uh, <laughs> well, it hurts a lot. Oh, okay. Well, may, let's, let's, before you grab some flyers, uh, let's get you into a dentist and see if there may be another way to go here. Uh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And, and the thing you always say, Fred, well, if your arm hurts, you're going to chop it off. <laughs> yeah, and everything that hurts, you're going to start. <laughs> it's going to be a short, stubby life. Uh, yes. <laughs> but also, you know, improving receptionist, attentive, and, and uh, effective call handling skills. Same thing with the training, understanding, you know, this, this kind of helps the, the people who are answering the phone, you know, understand, you know, um, what the patient needs and being able to talk, you know, more effectively to the patient. Um, and then identifying market opportunities to increase calls, as we mentioned earlier, tracking what your marketing is doing is super important so that you understand where your calls are coming from, you know, and you know, how many calls are you getting and what are the results of those calls? As, as you pointed out with that, you know, that particular slide where the web dynamics, where there were a lot of calls and only a small percentage of booked appointments. Yeah. The fact that the patient prism can tell you, uh, you know, let you drill down into what, they understood from the advertising what drove them. It's like, wow, they're they're really in love with clear aligners, or mm -hmm. geez, they really had uh, no understanding about implants. Over and over, you get these calls and say, "Call us about implants," and they go, "Geez, I thought it took six months." And you go, "Great, I've got more messaging information from these people, from the ones who converted and from the ones who got away." It's right. just, it's a, a much deeper level of information that you can they really do. refine your marketing uh, yeah. rather than just a bunch of numbers about who came and who didn't and who accepted treatment and what did they produce. It's like, why did that medium work? Why did right. that ad work? Why right. didn't it? Why didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you know, the phone is the lifeline to a practice. You know, um, these are, you know, some of the things people have said, Washington Smiles is the best way to see how calls are being handled without micromanaging the team. Um, which is really important because most people don't, you know, they don't want to be micromanaged. People don't want to be that and the dentist right. doesn't have time to do it. Right. Uh, the right. office manager doesn't have time to do it. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's like having a coach there. It's like I, I love the analysis like a football team or, or any sports where even if somebody has been playing for 20 years, they still have a coach there that just kind of helps them improve and get better. Even Tom Brady has a coach to help him yeah. throw his pass yeah. a little better. Yeah. You know, down in Valley, this is the and first time. Sometimes two or three. And, and what, what patient prison was giving you is, is uh, videos of 30 different coaches. Uh, right. That are targeted towards that individual situation. Right, right. Yeah, and you can see here, you know, this is the first time a company listened to our calls and told us how we can communicate better with our patients. Yeah, when that happens the first time, you realize, Oh, the, the, the dentist or the office manager here says, oh, this is full of opportunity. I thought there was no opportunity at all. And it's, right. it's, it's everywhere. And then, and then, then of course, the, the receptionist will hear it and go, wow, I, 
I wasn't smiling at all in that conversation. <laughs> you know? like, and it's a revelation for them. They they do, you know, uh, self analysis from that from that to, from the coaching of the call. But they they start to coach themselves. You don't have to say. You can just say, "What did you hear in this call?" It's like I hear a pretty nasty attitude from myself. Uh, right. right. I want to change that because I didn't know it. I didn't know it sounded that way. Right. Yeah. Right. So. And, so. Yeah, and that last one was that last thing was the the doctors got so busy they added two associates because. That's right. Yes, dental. You know, yeah. You patients need you did more new patients. You know, one right. patient is five patients. Right. Down the line. That's the reality is one good patient that you give a remarkable experience to is going to lead you to five more patients. You build a practice on that, on creating a great experience. So anyone that gets away is, is really a, a staggering waste. The, the repercussions in the, on the negative side are significant when you let somebody get away. Right, right. Very true. So, um, like to open up the floor to questions. Um, if anybody has anything they would like to ask myself or Fred, um, and they just put it in the little chat column there. <laughs> yes, yeah, in the chat column. Let's see, and I'm going to open up the chat column. There we go. And uh, let's see. Well, I think somebody is probably wondering yes. what, what's involved uh, in getting started with patient prism. Yes, yes. And getting involved uh, with, with starting with patient prism uh, is very easy. First of all, reach out to me. Uh, my information will be at the end of, of this uh, webinar. Um, do a, do a, a full demo with me and I'll show you everything about patient prism, how, how it works, all the data you're going to receive. And then we'll take it from there. Getting set up is very easy and very simple. We have a full team that takes a profile of, of your practice. So, you know, we know all about the practice. Uh, we have an IT team that helps get everything set up so that when the calls come in, we can capture the data. And then, of course, our customer experience team is amazing. Um, they reach out to you. They, they train you on how to use the software. Um, and most importantly, we have check-in meetings once a month so that you can you know, go over the data with you. Make sure you're getting the data you're supposed to get um, and that you're, you're using it. And if you have any questions, we wanna know, we wanna figure it out if there's anything going wrong immediately. So. And meanwhile, the AI is in the background learning and learning and learning from every phone call. Yes, and, and AI is a super important part of the program. Um, and, 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 you know, with, with machine learning today, it can do so many things so fast for you. And, it, it, you know, using it as a tool uh, to better your practice um, is, is definitely a plus. And, and I tell you, every year, I'm just amazed more and more at what AI can do um, and, and how it is helping us and how it's helping shape the things. The whole industry in general um, is, is being shaped by AI. So this tool um, is definitely something that will improve the practice over and over and over again. And, it's, and, and to me, it, it, you, this is an opportunity to get involved in using technology and AI yes. to, to solve your biggest problem. And, and also, and now you're, you're involved. Now, you, now you're starting to use the latest technology in your practice on, a, yeah. on the management and operational side. Uh, mm -hmm. There's plenty of technology coming in on the, on the clinical side. Right. But right. To, to run your business better and, and to start to adapt these technologies. I mean, I can't even imagine a patient prism, what it does now is pretty incredible. I can't imagine what it'll do in five years. Five years, so, yeah. So if you're adapting it now and incorporating it into your practice, you're gonna, you're gonna ride that wave faster yes. than everyone else catching yes. up. Yeah, and I do have a question. Um, and the concern is, does follow-up calls work? Um, and, and I assume they're asking about uh, the re-engage loss opportunities yes. when you get that information uh, and you call back that person after you know the alert has been sent out. Um, and the answer is most definitely yes. Um, if nothing else, the, the patient, um, uh, is, is very impressed with the fact that the office even took the time to just call back 
check in on them, you know, see, you know, uh, see if there's anything they can do for them. Um, that alone sometimes will just get, and, and perhaps there was some information that was missed that they didn't get before. Next thing you know, they're like, wow, these people really care. Yes, I will go ahead and schedule with you after all. Yeah, and just, just as important as to remember, it's one out of five, not five out of five, that, right. that, that, are, you, that you're going to recapture. Right. So don't get discouraged that you didn't recapture it. Know right. that you're that, that you're not going to recapture all of it. A lot of people go like, "Oh, well, that, they didn't want to. They didn't want to reappoint. I, they were annoyed that I called them back. They're going to be everything from annoyed to ecstatic. You know, they'll be all over the bandwidth. You're trying to recapture from zero to something. Right. And anything is better. One patient is worth it. Nothing. Two, three, four. Now is you're you're really in an advantageous position. But also that thing that you said is. When you call them back and say, you know what, I forgot to mention that we have financing. You know, I was thinking about our conversation and I totally forgot. It's not, and that's, that's my fault for not bringing it up because I, I heard that you had a concern about the cost and I forgot to bring up financing. Um, or that, that, that we have a new patient or mentioned we have a, we have a new patient special that, yeah. that, that we do. Uh, and, and I didn't bring it up, and, and so I wanted to make sure you knew that. And they go, wow, they were thinking about the call, and they called me back, and you're going to get, and you're going to increase the number. You won't get 90, but stop trying to bat 1,000. Nobody, yeah. nobody really bat <laughs> Nobody's going to do it. Know, that, know that, that one person that didn't do it is leading you to the next person who will. Right. Uh, and, you know, recapturing, you know, like I said, you, you call – 25 people back and get five patients out of it. That's 60 patients in a year who are leading you to five more patients through word of mouth. Word so of mouth. 360 people over the right. course of three, four, five years. That's an enormous number. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot of production. That's yeah. half a practice. That's, that's pretty powerful. Yeah. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. So, with that, um, let's see, that seems to be the last question. So in conclusion, uh, please reach out to me uh, if you're interested in a demo of the program, uh, Patient Prism, I'd be happy to set something up, something up with you and, and go through the whole program with you and show you step by step, you know, how, how Patient Prism can help turn more calls into patients. And um, with that, I, I want to thank you, Fred, um, for, for joining me and of course for all that you've done in the dental industry and all that you've done for me personally. Um, I never get a real chance to tell you how much I really appreciate you, but um, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Vic. I, I, I love what you're working with here. I, I'm excited for what Patient Prism does and, and the problem that it solves because it is the biggest problem. And, uh, so, yes. and it's been a pleasure and, and really folks, get a demo, start to incorporate this into your practice. You're going to be, uh, you know, it's going to pay for itself uh, 50 times over. Uh, it, it, it's, it's shocking uh, how, and, and the beauty is it <laughs> yes. doesn't take long. As soon as you recapture two, three patients, you re which will happen in the first month, you go, oh, wait a minute, this is working. Uh, this is, I got three patients I didn't have, five patients I wouldn't have. You're, it, it, it changes your whole outlook on, on what's possible. So what's possible. Yeah. find out for yourself. Make the difference in your practice and solve this number one problem. Thanks, yeah. Vic. Yeah. Thank you, Fred. And everybody, thank you for joining us. And again, please take down my information. Reach out to me if you have any questions uh, or if you would like to see a demo. And I um, hope to see you all at conferences or talk to you soon.